Hi, I'm Dr. Rob, and if you're a fan of field trips, well, you're in the right place, because not only are we going on a field trip to somewhere, the Queensland Museum and the Anzac Legacy Gallery, we're also going on a bit of a trip back in time, 100 years ago, to around the First World War and Queensland's involvement in it. So we're going to take a scoot through there and find out a lot of things, including how a very large tank got inside the museum. The gallery features more than 400 objects that explore World War I through personal stories and experiences, and more than 90 stories that relate to people, places or events with a Queensland focus. So this gallery is full of lots of artefacts of course, but more than that it's full of stories because all of these different artefacts, they tell a story, they're part of someone's story, it relates to a time and a place. For example, this all relates to James Robinson and his story. And he's actually got a really interesting link to the giant tank that I mentioned earlier. Now I think his story is pretty interesting, but why don't we hear from the curators who put this legacy gallery together and some of their favourite stories. One of the objects that we have on display in the gallery that really resonates with me and that's a really special object is the Victoria Cross or, or VC. Uh, so this is the highest military award specifically for gallantry and I just think the concept of gallantry and military service is, is really interesting. Um, gallantry might be, I guess, sound a bit old fashioned to us now but uh, to me it means, um, you know, really um, putting you know, your job and the health and safety of your teammates before your own safety. And, and certainly that's what um, Paddy Bugden, who was the recipient of the VC that we have on display in the gallery, did. He was awarded that um, in World War One, but unfortunately, um, you know, he, he, he was killed in action. So that was awarded posthumously. Um, and we also have another VC story in the gallery, uh, which is more recent, and that's of Corporal Dan Kieran, who was awarded the VC a few years ago. So those two stories work really well together, one sort of from World War I and one contemporary. So you've probably guessed what this is already. It is, of course, a Sturmpanzerwagen. Well, it's a tank. This is the First World War German tank that I was talking about, called Mephisto in this case. This is amazing because, well, lots of reasons, but one of them is it's the only surviving German tank of its kind anywhere in the world. That's pretty cool. But the other thing is getting it into the gallery here was really, really tricky. There was only about that much that separated it from the roof of the gallery. And the story of getting it here, well, that's a good story too. Hi, my name's Nick and I'm the Curator of Archaeology here at the Queensland Museum. I've had quite a bit of experience moving Mephisto over the last few years. And when we move Mephisto, there's really two questions that we need to ask ourselves. One is how did we get it in here? And two is why did we move it into here? And the answer to why is below, it's under our feet. You see the weight of Mephisto is 33 tonnes, but we moved it on a giant steel cradle which added more tonnage to that total weight. So we had to find a place within the Queensland Museum that could support all of that weight in a fo small footprint such as the size of Mephisto. So here we are, we're at the front of Mephisto and what many people won't know about Mephisto is that it's actually imbalanced with its weight. The front is considerably lighter than the back end of Mephisto and that's because the engine is sitting over the back there. So one of the rules we have in museums when we're handling objects, whether they be something as small as a button or something as large as a World War I tank, is that we don't want to touch the actual object for fear of damaging it. So with Mephisto, what we did there was build this cradle. It's a six ton steel cradle that sits under the object, supports the entire weight of the tank, but it allows us to fix chains and other lifting equipment to the cradle and not to Mephisto. Okay, so now we know the why of where Mephisto is placed, let's talk about the how. So basically Mephisto was brought in from the street and we bought, had to bring it in through the front of the museum which meant we had to take all of the glass and everything off the building and then bring it in on these giant rails. And once we got Mephisto to a certain point, we had to straighten the tank and then send it in through behind me. And as you can see, there isn't a lot of space to fit a World War I tank through this little gap. Now, if you can't actually make it into the museum, well, that's not too much of a problem anymore because, of course, we've got technology and the Queensland Museum has launched this amazing app called Anzac Correspondent. And it's an augmented reality app where you can actually play the part of a war correspondent. And so you can go around learning about the stories and the war through this technology on your own device. It's pretty cool. Download it and take a look. 
the Anzac correspondent app tells some of the stories that are here in the Anzac Legacy Gallery for all of Queensland. It's an opportunity to be able to explore the stories in a, in a new a way with augmented reality. So it was really important to us when we were building this app that it was really fit for purpose for the students who were really going to be using it. So we had a number of points throughout the design process where we checked in and ran user testing sessions with students at a number of different schools in Brisbane so that we were able to get their live feedback on the in-development app. The thing I like best about the app Anzac Correspondent is how easy it is to use and how interesting it is. I also really love the idea of it being able to help kids in remote communities learn about this iconic part of Australian history. So it can be used uh, remotely from the museum and it's really about having them discover the objects in their own time, uh, in their own place. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's sort of wander around the Anzac Legacy Gallery here. If of course you can't get into the museum, well that's okay, you can always jump online and head to the Queensland Museum website, you'll find lots of really interesting resources on there as well. I'm going to keep looking. <laughs>